Welcome to StoryFlix. In this video, we will explain Say I Love You. This movie tells the story of a high school girl who cannot make friends or have a boyfriend. One day, by accident, she injures the most popular boy in her school. Somehow, the boy likes her and tells everyone one-sidedly that she is his friend. He then saves her from the stalker by kissing her. From that kiss, their love story began. Does their love have a happy ending? Let's find out in Say I Love You. Say I Love You begins by showing a handsome and popular boy named Yamato Kurosawa, who is loved by the girls at his school. On the other hand, Mei Tachibana is a quiet and aloof girl. While everyone was busy with the festival being held at the school, Mei didn't seem enthusiastic. Yamato was about to return to his class accompanied by his best friend, a young man named Kenji Nakanishi. Kenji is known as a mischievous student. Seeing Mei standing while listening to music, Kenji deliberately nudged her, causing Mei to fall down. Mei rushed away from there and ran into Yamato who seemed interested in Mei. Kenji then tells Yamato that Mei is his classmate and she is very quiet. The next day, when Mei was climbing the school stairs, Kenji who was behind her then mischievously tugged her skirt. Feeling annoyed and unable to stay still, Mei then kicked back, but the kick hit Yamato who was next to Kenji. Immediately, Yamato fell and suffered injuries to his face and wrists. Kenji and the others looked surprised that Mei acted like that. The other students later said that Kenji tugged on Mei's skirt, not Yamato. However, Yamato then laughed when he saw Mei's panties. After that, the incident of Yamato falling down the stairs caused by Mei became quite shocking news at school. Some people seem to make fun of Mei because of the pattern of her panties, while Yamato's fans are seen sending letters containing insults and threats to Mei for hurting Yamato. An annoyed Mei tries to throw the letters away. Yamato then approached Mei, intending to apologize for the incident on the stairs. He then asked Mei to be his friend, but Mei refused. Yamato didn't give up. He then handed her a piece of paper with his phone number and asked Mei to call him. Mei, who realized that Yamato's wrist was injured because of her, gave him a plaster and hurried away. After school, Mei rushed to a bakery, where she worked part-time there. Not long after, a man entered the bakery and bought some bread. The man seemed to be attracted to Mei for always keeping an eye on her, even after leaving the bakery. The next day at school, Yamato approached Mei and said he was waiting for a call from her. Mei frankly tells Yamato that she never saves her friends' phone numbers because she doesn't like having friends at school because they just like bullying other people, not really wanting to be friends. Hearing this, Yamato understood why Mei never had friends. In class, Mei recalled how she used to be the victim of bullying at school as a child. But she always tries to stay strong to face the trauma and move on with her life. As usual, in the afternoon, Mei worked part-time at the bakery. But when she was about to go home, she realized that she was being watched and followed by a man who often came to the bakery where she worked. Mei then enters a bookstore to avoid the man. However, the man didn't move from his place after a while and kept an eye on her outside the bookstore. The confused Mei tried to call her mother. But the call went unanswered. Having no other person's phone number to call for help, Mei finally called Yamato and asked him for help. Not long after, Yamato approached Mei to the bookstore. Mei then tells what happened to her and shows the man who always follows and watches her. Yamato then embraced Mei out of the bookstore, confessed his love for her, and then kissed her. Seeing Mei kissing Yamato, the man finally left and never appeared around her again. For Yamato maybe the kiss was a normal thing. But for Mei, that kiss was her first kiss, so she felt very nervous and acted awkwardly in front of Yamato. Yamato then drove Mei home and asked about her past drama. Mei then recounted the bullying she experienced as a child. Yamato, who was sympathetic, then asked her not to hesitate to call him whenever she needed help. Yamato then said that he would call her if he needed help. Mei seemed impressed by Yamato's kind attitude and thanked him. The next day at school, Mei and Yamato greet each other when they pass. Kenji and his friend, a girl named Asami Akawa, seemed surprised to see their closeness. Yamato then invites Mei to a karaoke place after school, but she refuses. Asami then tries to persuade Mei until she finally agrees to come along. Mei seemed uncomfortable with the frenetic atmosphere at the karaoke place and decided to leave the room. Asami then followed her and sat next to her. Asami asked if Mei had kissed Yamato while telling her that she had also been kissed by Yamato and the girls at their school because for Yamato, kissing was a substitute for greetings. 
Hearing this, Mei immediately felt irritated and decided to leave. Yamato then chases after her and they get into an argument. Mei said that she didn't like kisses without feelings. But Yamato grabbed her arm, kissed her, and said it was a greeting. Yamato then kissed Mei again and said it was a kiss for a girl he thought was cute. After that, he kissed her again and said it was a kiss for the only girl he liked. Mei was silent when Yamato repeatedly kissed her. Yamato then asked if she liked him. But Mei distracts by saying that her chest is tight. Yamato said it was a sign that she liked him and kissed Mei again. The next day at school, Mei and Asami attend sports lessons on the field. When Asami warmed up by running, the students who watched her on the sidelines cheered for her who had bigger boobs than the other girls. Not only that, it seems that the girls in their class also ostracized Asami because of her boob size. Mei who realized this then thought that Asami was a strong girl. But Asami denied it and revealed that sometimes she also feels sad. But after befriending Yamato, she can become more confident because Yamato always protects her. When they were about to go home from school, Yamato and Mei heard Asami's screams, who was irritated by Kenji's naughty act of deliberately holding her boobs. Yamato and Mei then approached Kenji and asked what had happened. Kenji reasoned that he was only joking while holding Asami's boobs. But Asami was so angry that she thought of him as a pervert. Yamato then went to Asami, trying to calm her down. Meanwhile, Mei approached Kenji and tried to give him an understanding of a woman's feelings. Not long after, Kenji and Asami finally met, where Kenji later apologized to her for being mean. Kenji then ventured to express his love for Asami, and the two of them officially started dating. Seeing this, Yamato told Mei that she would definitely confess her love for him someday. One day, when Yamato and Mei were out on a weekend trip, they bumped into their schoolmates, Aiko Muto and Masashi Tachikawa. Yamato openly says that he is dating Mei, which makes Aiko seem jealous and displeased with Mei being around Yamato. When Yamato and Masashi were bowling, Aiko and Mei stood on the edge of the arena discussing Yamato, where Aiko told Mei that she had slept with Yamato. But Mei did not necessarily believe her. After that, Yamato was approached by a talent agent who asked him to become a magazine model, but Yamato refused. Yamato then invites Mei to visit his junior high school, where he tells Mei that he once had a friend. But when his best friend was bullied by delinquent students, he didn't dare to defend him and instead bullied him so that he wouldn't be the target of bullying. Since that incident, his best friend decided to change schools. Yamato then felt very guilty and hoped to meet again with his best friend to apologize to him. He told this so that Mei would know the bad side of him that is rarely known by others. Yamato then expresses his love for Mei. But Mei diverted the conversation by mentioning Yamato and Aiko who had slept together. Yamato did not deny this, but he said it happened long before he knew Mei. Mei decides to trust Yamato and face it all with him. After that, they kissed again. Seeing Yamato and Mei's intimacy, Aiko who was irritated then vented it by going to a love hotel with Masashi. After they had intercourse, Aiko was still frustrated with Yamato and Mei's relationship. On the other hand, Masashi loves Aiko very much and accepts her as she is, including her feelings for Yamato. The next day, Yamato and Aiko meet on the school roof, where Aiko once again expresses her love for Yamato and the hard work she has to go through to always look beautiful and perfect to please him. But Yamato said that he now has Mei. After that, Aiko crossed paths with Mei and told her that she had been rejected by Yamato. Mei and Aiko become classmates in the following school year and the two now seem to be getting closer. Aiko then told Mei about a first-year student who was quite popular because of his good looks. His name is Kai Takemura, and it turns out that he is Yamato's best friend who became a victim of bullying in junior high school. Although quite surprised by Kai's sudden appearance, Yamato seemed happy and apologized to him for the bullying he experienced. Kai doesn't seem to mind this, even though he actually intends to take revenge on those who have bullied him. Kai runs into Mei at the bakery, where she works and decides to chat for a while. Kai reveals in Mei about his desire for revenge on his bullies. But Mei advises that revenge will not change anything and will instead make us like bullies who like to oppress others. Hearing Mei's words, Kai immediately became silent and reconsidered his plans for revenge. Kai had visited one of the bullies at his school for revenge. But he gave up after the bully apologized to him in earnest. Kai then decided not to continue his revenge plan and told Mei about it. Mei seems happy and supports his decision and encourages him so that he can change for the better. Apparently, 
The closeness of Mei and Kai was known by Yamato who immediately felt jealous. Yamato then asked what Mei had talked about with Kai. But Mei replied that it was not something important. Yamato immediately kissed Mei and asked her to always be by his side. One day, Kai visits the bakery where Mei works, and because Mei's work hour is over, he decides to take Mei home. Kai then expressed his love for Mei in the middle of the trip. However, Mei rejects him. After all, Yamato is the most important person in her life because he has taught her many things, including giving her the courage to make friends and become close to other people. While at school, Yamato told Kenji that he felt very restless whenever Mei was around Kai. Kenji then said that Yamato had really fallen in love with Mei. Yamato and Kai then have a one-on-one -on -one conversation where Kai tells Yamato that he has been rejected by Mei. He then asks Yamato to always protect Mei and not hurt her feelings because she really loves him. Yamato looked happy and relieved because Mei actually chose him over Kai. While having dinner with Kenji and Masashi at a cafe, Yamato meets a girl named Megumi Kitagawa, a magazine model. Megumi apparently secretly took a photo of Yamato and sent it to her agency. Megumi's agency seems interested in Yamato and decides to make him a magazine model. This time, Yamato accepted the offer and asked Mei, Asami, and Kenji to come for his first photo shoot. The three of them came on the appointed day to support Yamato. At first all went well. But when Yamato and Megumi took a photo shoot with more intimate poses, Mei looked jealous, shed tears, and decided to leave. After Yamato's photo shoot was published in the magazine, everyone admired his good looks. Yamato then told his friends that he would be a contracted permanent model for the magazine. Mei didn't seem too happy to hear that, but she could only suppress it because she didn't want to destroy Yamato's happiness. As time goes by, Mei spends less time with Yamato because he is now busy with his work as a model. Mei then hears a rumor circulating at school that Yamato and Megumi are dating. Instantly she felt her heart break. Aiko and Asami who realized this then approached Mei and tried to calm her down. They then suggested that Mei express her love for Yamato and fight for her love. When Mei was about to return to class, she heard again about the rumors of Yamato and Megumi's closeness. She rushed out of school and felt that she did not deserve to be side by side with Yamato, who according to people was more compatible with Megumi. But in the middle of the trip, she remembered what Aiko and Asami said and decided to go back to school to meet Yamato. On the other hand, Aiko tells Yamato about Megumi's photos that make Mei jealous. Aiko then reminds Yamato that Mei is an innocent girl who will certainly feel burdened by the photos. Hearing this, Yamato rushed to look for Mei throughout the school. Mei and Yamato finally meet in the school hallway, where this time Mei kisses Yamato first and expresses her love. Yamato later apologized to Mei and explained that he and Megumi had no relationship and were just friends. The two of them hugged each other and cried happily. At the next photo shoot, Yamato chose to resign and said goodbye to Megumi because he wanted to focus on something important. The news of Yamato resigning as a magazine model has spread in the school and his friends support his decision and seem happy to see Yamato and Mei walk together hand in hand. Mei then asked why Yamato resigned and he told her that now he just wanted to focus on something that was important to him and now the most important thing for him was Mei's smile. Hearing this, Mei seemed to blush and feel happy. Mei then asked what she could do for Yamato and Yamato asked her to say I love you because that way he would feel happier and live life more passionately. Mei then obeyed and said that she loved Yamato. After that, they kissed. The phrase I love you may sound short, but it will be more meaningful when we fall in love. The moral we can learn from this film is never to be afraid to fall in love because the feelings of love we have for someone will give a new experience in our lives where we can learn many things, including understanding other people and ourselves. Although not all love stories have a happy ending, but every process we go through and the obstacles we face will make us stronger and better in looking at life.